What's up, YouTube? This is Computer Headquarters with another yeah. video about our i9 9900K RTX 2080 Ti in the Cougar Conquer case. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, I do suggest that you may go back, look into our albums that we have on our YouTube channel and start from the beginning to see where we started because this is pretty far into the future and I think this is the seventh video or something like that in the series. Um, but now today's video is gonna be really exciting. Some big parts came in the mail finally. This is the Bixky brand waterway that's gonna go into the Cougar Conquer case. This was the biggest problem part for us because we thought it was gonna take a long time for it to arrive from China. Um, I'll get into that story later. Uh, additionally, I ordered a vertical PCI bracket so we can mount the card vertically. Um, I talked about that in a previous video, how cool it would be to do that, and then did more research, and sure enough, we can do that. Uh, we got our fittings for the water cooling, um, and I'm probably missing something that you'll see in, the, in a little bit when we start installing some parts, but I'm pretty excited. We have pretty much everything we need to continue and finish this build now, so hopefully we'll have this up and running in the next couple days. Stay tuned. So before we begin actually installing parts, opening boxes and all that stuff, I want to talk about a little bit of a drama that happened with this waterway. Um, just so you guys know for if you're going to order something online from China, AliExpress, Alibaba, whatever. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of ordering things in small quantities. I've done plenty of deals with bigger manufacturers directly where I'm buying you know, 100 or 1,000 video cards at one time. That's all gone very well. Uh, but ordering one part, I've only done that a few times. Um, but as I showed you in that previous clip, we have the waterway here. Now this waterway in my hands is from Bixky, the actual brand, direct in the United States. They did have that in stock at their US warehouse. Here's the box. Um, and it even has a little Ice Dragon logo there. I'm thinking they might be big Game of Thrones fans. If you guys know what I mean. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Um, but pretty nice retail box. They even... Uh, they even had some uh, Sour Patch, oh, here's the camera, Sour Patch Kids candy inside. That was a pretty nice touch. Um, unfortunately, the waterway I ordered from AliExpress uh, also arrived today. And this is where this, the drama kind of starts because going back last week, I got in touch with Bic Ski Direct here in the US. They had it in stock. It was actually slightly more expensive for the same product, um, but I was willing, it was like $10 more. So I was willing to pay the $10 more. I even paid a little bit extra again for the two-day shipping. Got here super fast, as you saw. Uh, and I went and I canceled the, my order on AliExpress. Now this is where everything starts to get weird because despite canceling it, uh, it, it basically said that we put the request into the buyer, sorry, the, the seller, to cancel your request, order. And up to that point, I had been communicating with the seller saying, hey, when's it gonna come? I had wrote a note when I ordered it, I need this ASAP. I paid expedited shipping, which is really expensive from China. Um, you know, all those kind of things. And their answers were like, it'll be ready when it's ready is the summary of what they said. No information, not gonna really help you out. Um, it was not helpful at all, which is why I canceled the order when I could find it somewhere else faster. Um, and as soon as I went to cancel the order, they go, oh, we shipped it. I'm like, sure you shipped it. So. As soon as I said I was gonna cancel it, they went and they immediately shipped the product instead of canceling my order because they probably figured, oh, we're gonna lose out on this, which uh, whatever their margin is, we're gonna lose out on that margin, we're gonna ship it. So it sh they shipped it like overnight, even though I, I didn't, I think I paid for like, you know, five day shipping instead of like a month shipping from China. Um, and it came like overnight. So they there's definitely something up. They knew what was going on when they saw that I wanted to cancel it. and. Uh, that's pretty frustrating because I'm gonna have to send it back. I don't I don't need two of these waterways and I'm not why should I why should I return one to the US Department for doing everything correctly when the the department over in China, which I don't think it's Bixky the brand in China I think it was some third-party seller uh, You know, they did everything wrong as part especially having bad customer service So I'm gonna have to go through the nightmare of returning it and I might have to do the whole call my credit card company and cancel it if they're going to be difficult about it. And I, I hate doing that stuff. I barely have ever had to do it, but this might be one of those cases if they're trying to charge me your stocking fees and shipping all the way back fees because I, I gave them plenty of notice to not ship it to me. And 
Anyway, what I do want to do is I have the product here, I have the box here. Why shouldn't I should definitely open the box and compare the products? Because what if it's a knockoff? What if on top of being bad service, bad shipping, they have a knockoff product where they're copying Bixky, a new company that's just coming up in the world? Like, you know, that would be even worse. So let's open up. Um, we've already seen what the package is for this one. I showed you the Ice Dragon packaging. So let's take a look at what the package from China looks like. I literally haven't even opened it yet. So I'll do that right now. Same one. Well, the box is the same. Um, the box is not open yet. So you can see there's like a seal right here. I'm not going to cut it open because I don't want them to try to charge me, you know, open box fees and things like that for opening the package because now they can't sell it as new again. So this is going right back and uh, we'll proceed with starting to try to install the waterway that we're going to be keeping. All right, guys, so we need to get this waterway into this computer case. And in order to really do this the right way, <laughs> I probably really need to take off some panels again. Uh, so moving backwards a little bit again, but no big deal. So this uh, whatever side panel definitely needs to come off. And in order to take that off, we have to take off, I believe, the front and top panels. So those will be coming off first. And then uh, I believe it's actually pretty easy. See that hole right there? That's actually going to slide over this bar right here. And then if you look at the back of this product, there's a really nice back plate here. Um, and there's some screw hole mounting points. And I believe that those should line up perfectly with some of the holes on the case. And then we slip some of the included uh, screws here through those holes to secure it. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this is. It looks like it's, oh, you know what? I think this is actually if you want to remove the pump and block off that hole. But we're going we're gonna to try giving this pump a whirl. Is that a funny way to say it because of whirling pump? Anyway, um, I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to take some stuff apart and come back with this bad boy hopefully installed and we'll go from there all right boys we have hit a sad snag very very sad uh this doesn't fit by like one millimeter check this out so this is this is trying to slide it over we've got that on the hole down there and it's just uh let's get a better angle it's like one millimeter too the, the radiator is about one millimeter too thick for this to slide into place, um, which brings us to a place where we need to come up with our solution. One, we return or keep the radiator, but return it, or we're gonna have to replace it. Let's just say replace. Replace the radiator with a different 360 millimeter radiator, uh, which probably is the most basic and easy solution. The only annoyance is that we already have this really cool plate thing and it's double stick taped on. So we probably have to use a heat gun to remove it. If we're, especially if we're going to reuse it. Um, so that sucks, and the cooling we would have got out of that is really awesome. So I, I really would love to figure out a way to keep it. Um, I guess we could also theoretically mount that radiator on the top and remove the top panel. We could do something like that, removing the top panel and mounting it on the top. The top panel obviously would not fit anymore. Maybe we could even build some custom brackets to make the top uh, panel still fit with an extension type of thing. There's that kind of thing we could do. Um, and then we could try to like use a Dremel and cut some of the edges off of the radiator on the edges. Cause it's, it's literally like one millimeter that it's off by. Um, and it looks like some of the excess, like the corner stuff, like let's see if I can zoom in here. This type of stuff where you mount fans onto it. It looks like that is all we would need to do is cut that away and it would fit. I kind of like that idea. I just don't know if I have the tools to do that properly, um, but it would be fun to try. I think if we cut just that little lip off that we would be able to slide her in. Um, so those are some options. We could try to sand down the top of this, but I think that's a bad idea because there's actually some LEDs up there and we don't want to risk compromising the reservoir part of this so that it could leak so that's probably not the best idea so yeah replace the 360 relocate it higher or modify the 360 i definitely like the idea of modifying it the best as far as being able to retain all that cooling power of such a thick radiator um i just don't know if i can do it so i think the first step is that we need to remove that radiator from the top uh and look at it outside of the case to see if we think we can modify it 
and uh, and then slide this guy in and get this get this installed at least because we're definitely keeping this no matter what. Anyway, we'll come back with the radiator, come back with the radiator out and the the waterway in. All right, we've got the waterway installed. It is secured by four screws in the back. It's solid. It looks good. Um, I'm very happy with the waterway itself. Just to remind everyone, the brand on this waterway is called Bixky. Their logo is like a dragon guy. Let's see if I can get focus on that little dragon. Um, I'm a big fan of their products, and I think they're going to be a big player in the uh, custom PC market in the next few years. They're, all of their products look amazing and uh, exciting, I would say. So be looking out for their stuff, especially if you're into custom stuff, custom water-cooled stuff. They're, they're really good, and now they have a U.S. office. So um, now moving forward, we still have these problems we need to talk about or address. So right now I just jokingly kind of have the 360-millimeter uh, top mount radiator on top of the case, and just kind of threw the panel on top of it for now just to mock it up. Um, and then I, this is the front panel is just kind of resting there. It's not really connected or anything. But that gap on the top is no bueno, my friends. I do not like that gap. It really needs to be filled with a radiator. So um, this, to me, doesn't seem to be a good option. It does look, it looks a little bit better when you put this thing in place. Oops, things are falling. Um, when you put this in place, it helps a little bit fill that gap but not enough um so yeah i think the next step is to take this radiator off let's take a look at if we think we can kind of trim some metal off of it. all right so here is the radiator removed and this is this is the side right here that we would need to modify and what we need to modify i think is totally possible i think this is something we should try i think this is my first choice so if you look at the lip between i can i can almost stick my finger here right and this, this plate is just there to be able to connect a fan or uh, secure a fan. You know, these are, these are fan screw holes. And I'm never going to be putting any fans on the bottom of this radiator. So they're not needed for me. Um, and that gap that's right here, that gap is just to ensure that when you screw, when you're, uh, screw like one of these guys, when it goes through the fan that if you, as you uh, secure it down, that it doesn't go so far down that it punctures and damages the fins on the radiator. So uh, completely fine for me to cut this away. I think what I would need to do is get a Dremel. And uh, I really only, I only need to do most of this side, I believe. Um, probably, oops, let me zoom out a little bit. Probably from about here to here. And if I can cut, if I can cut this away, um, I should be able to uh, slide everything in to make it fit. And if not, then at least I tried and said I tried, right? And I have to just order another radiator. But I think we can make this work, guys. I'm going to go for it. So um, next step would be to probably use a Dremel. I think I need a Dremel to cut this. I hope that's strong enough to cut through this. Um, I could also try bending, you know, taking like a needle nose like this and you know try bending up the only problem is as i bend up i might puncture into the fins so i'm a little bit worried about that too but uh maybe maybe something like this and pulling out but uh we'll have to get to that later i don't think i'm going to do that today uh i don't want to damage it just to be in a big hurry so i'll probably bring my dremel in from home and i think that's probably the way to do it is to start with the dremel and try to cut you know, cut here, go up, and then also cut maybe a little bit on the top here, um, kind of right below the line. Oh, sorry about the focus, guys. Let me try that again. Um, probably cut right below the line here as it goes and do it on both sides. And I think that if we do that, that will be good. So anyway, let's talk about other stuff that's more fun, okay? We've got plenty of other work to do, and um, we've got the video card to be vertically mounted with the vertical mount we can easily do that today uh, we have all the fittings here we can start fitting some of these guys up um, and then i want to talk about the confusion that is the the waterway because there are 11 holes on the waterway and i don't know how they work <laughs> as simple as that uh it looks like only the 
these areas can hold the water and like areas like over here do not hold water. So uh, actually, I think I'm understanding it better now, even though I didn't understand it earlier. I do wish there was an instruction manual. This is another product very similar to EK Water Blocks where there's no instruction manual. I did check the entire box and there's nothing. Um, but they do have a US team, so maybe I can get some support from them. But the bottom line is there's a pump. There's an in and out on the pump. Um, I guess, you know what, say, this is confusing, isn't it, guys? So here's the pump. So the pump, you can see, is connected to this part of the waterway right here. And there are two spots there. There's a third spot there. And then there's a fourth spot there. And then there's a bunch more spots over here. So I'm assuming that if you put connections on, I don't I actually just, you know what? I don't know which way the water is going to flow. I would have to think that it would flow down to the pump and that the pump's going to uh, pump up. And so that these three ports right here are going out. That's an assumption. Uh, I also would assume that these spots right here are more for just cosmetic, uh, just to give it a little more flair. And same with this one right here, because I don't see that they're connected to anywhere else on the block itself. I think it's just like, you know, connect a tube going into this and then show orange and then coming back out. It's just for looks is my, is my guess. Uh, if you guys know about this stuff and you're look you're watching me, feel free to correct me on the comments. Uh, but I'll, I'm hoping to learn pretty quickly here what I need to do. And, um, we've got the, we've got a water block so we can, we can just start throwing some of these bad boys on there for fun. These are, uh, these are excess, uh, wait, what brand is this again? X, <laughs> I'm gonna try to get this on camera here with the focus, XSPC. And I bought a lot of stuff from them in the past. Their stuff's good and it's really well priced. So this color maybe wasn't matching my 90 degree turns, but I, I kind of don't care guys. This is like kind of like a black chrome, whereas my 90 degree turns are all just silver. Um, and that's fine because I have some silver and I have some black stuff on this build, but, uh, these guys just fit in, into here and I'm just kind of mocking these up right now. These aren't, I'm not tightening these down all the way, but this is for, uh, you know, PETG tubing. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but that's rigid tubing. And I have a, a bunch of it over here. I've got lots of mess going. You guys are, some of you, uh, neat freaks out there are probably super triggered by all the mess I have going, but. I know where everything is and it doesn't bother me. Um, so this is PETG P -E -T -G tubing. It's rigid tubing. Uh, it's really good to work with. You can bend it with heat, but I'm doing this build with no bends. I'm going to do all 90 degree turns. So um, you, ha you do have to cut these the right way. You have to get the right tools, which I have. I have like a kit right here with, uh, you know, special to tools for cutting. And even like this guy right here is for grinding down the edges to make them, I think it's called beveled is the phrase you're looking for. So that like you cut the, you get the right bevel on it so that it seats onto uh, these fittings properly and gets the right seal. So there's a bunch of little things to do there, but uh, you know, I guess let's, let's get the water, let's get the video. I'm kind of, I'm sorry guys, I'm all over the place, aren't I? I think it's probably because I'm thinking so much about this radiator thing and what I'm gonna do. And I'm just doing the seat of the pants right now. This isn't planned out, but let's get that video card. This is something that we can do all the way. We can get that locked in. Let's get that video card uh, going vertical. But as much as I just said, I'm going all over the place. I think I have to go another all over the place thing. I need to switch gears here real quick too, just before I do that, because I think I'm going to be covering the SSD slots. And uh, I didn't talk to you guys about my SSDs. So these, these were installed over the weekend. Uh, I've got two ni Samsung 960 Pro 512, so we'll RAID zero them, make them super fast. Uh, I did talk a little bit about PCI lanes and how my video, I only have 24 lanes on this board. My video card's using 16, which leaves me only eight. Uh, NVMe SSDs use four each, so that's gonna saturate all 24 lanes. I was debating about using one of these. I have some uh, PCIe SSDs. This is a SanDisk Fusion. Uh, 1.3 terabyte SSD it has really good performance, but it uses eight lanes. So that would have saturated everything I have. And then this is a G scale 960 gig PCIe SSD, which also uses eight lanes. I also have a, uh, 
an Asus Raider over here. That's only 240 gig. And this, that had nothing to do with this. This is just over here coincidentally. But um, I couldn't really make that all work out. So what I'm doing is I'm going to have my drive number one be the RAID 0 1 terabyte with these 960 Pros. And then I've got an older, where was it? Uh, oh, right here. I've got an older Samsung uh, 850 Evo 1 terabyte. So this will be my output drive when I'm making videos. Whereas my games and my OS and my work will all be on the 960 Pros. Um, so I do need to put this piece back together now that I've showed you what I have in there. So let's do that and then let's get the... Wow! Freaking sick, huh, bro? Uh, I'm, all jokes aside, I'm pretty happy with how this is coming along. Uh, the vertical video card is definitely what needed to happen. I'm sure you guys agree with me. I think that maybe some of the mistakes I've made here are mostly just like color coordinating stuff. You know, like I've got the darker, uh, it's like almost like the black chrome on the fittings here. Uh, and I've got black here and then silvery chrome here and then the copper and the copper. So it is kind of jumping around a little bit on the colors, but to be honest with you, it doesn't bother me a whole lot. Uh, what, would I, what I would love to make this like exactly what I would want would actually be to have these fittings in chrome, or sorry, copper. If I could get copper plated or copper fittings, that would be sick. And for all those people that don't know this, it actually does matter because as your coolant is passing through all the different types of metal, um, some metals are more resistant to uh, corrosion than others and mixing different metals together is actually not always great for your system. Um, aluminum is the worst uh, for your system to be touching and copper I believe is the best um, And I don't know. I mean, it's probably outside of like gold platinum and some other crazier stuff that no one would ever use but Copper is pretty much the best it gets and uh, it would be nice if these were all just pure copper And I think it would look really cool too if these were pure copper, but uh, this is definitely coming along You know, we've got the waterway. We've got the video card vertical. We've got the water block on the CPU We've got the right RAM in. we've got the the uh, extension cables, which I need to, they're not cleaned up yet. We have a, a mess of cables in the back. The top panel still aren't on, but we're, we're moving in the right direction, guys. So um, I think this is probably a good place to stop for this video. It's probably already long enough for you guys. And uh, let's, let's just uh, keep on moving and have a, some updates tomorrow with what we're gonna do with, with modifying that radiator. Have a good day, guys. And if you like this type of content, Please like and subscribe and comment.